Hello everyone, Shrouded Hand here. Some people seem to like the video I did last week, so I thought I would dig through my DVD collection and find something else to review. This week I'm going to be looking at what I consider to be a highly underrated 80s slasher movie, Slumber Party Massacre. I'll start by saying this, Slumber Party Massacre is never going to win any awards for originality. It's as generic a slasher film as you're ever going to see. One of the reasons for this is because it was originally written to be a comedic spoof of cheesy slasher movies. If you've seen any of the Scream movies or Behind the Mask, you'll know that this idea was way ahead of its time. However, when director Amy Holden Jones got hold of the script, she turned it into a serious horror movie. The result is an extremely run-of-the-mill slasher movie, but it retains a lot of the original dark humour. Now, I may be calling it generic and unoriginal, but don't let that put you off. Somehow this just adds to the movie's charm. There's a certain simplicity to the movie that I really like. There's very little plot. Some girls are having a sleepover and there's a killer on the loose. That's all you need to know. The monster in the movie is as generic as the plot. Russ Thorne, the double denim wearing, drill wielding maniac. The only backstory you get is one newspaper headline and a short radio broadcast warning people to be on the lookout for an escaped lunatic. Our top story. Police are still searching for escaped murderer Russ Thorne. Thorne was convicted of the brutal slaying of five people in Venice, California in 1969. More news in Apart from his big phallic drill, he doesn't really have a thing. He doesn't wear a mask. He doesn't kill at a certain time of year. He doesn't have anything linking him to his victims. All you know about him is that he's insane and he likes to kill people. But there's something about his average appearance that makes him all the more frightening. He looks like someone you just pass on the street without looking twice. His very blandness makes him stand out among all the cartoonish slasher villains that are out there. It's easier to suspend your disbelief when the killer looks like some guy you might see in the supermarket doing his grocery shopping. My only criticism is that he doesn't get enough dialogue in the film. He's silent for most of the movie. Right at the end he gets a few lines which really let the viewer know how unhinged he is. How pretty. All of you are very pretty. <laughs> Please don't do this. I love you. Please, I didn't hurt you. Please don't do this. <laughs> Takes a lot of love for a person to do this. You know you want it. You love it. Yes. I, I don't even know you. I feel like this might have been more effective nearer the start of the movie. It would have set the tone for his character and it would have given his murders a creepy edge that I think is missing. And there's even less development of the other characters. The film doesn't mess around trying to get you emotionally invested in the victims. There's no plot that you need to follow. It just jumps right into the action and doesn't let up. Within five minutes of the film starting, Russ Thorne has killed his first victim. Then we get a ridiculously gratuitous shower scene, then straight on to another murder. The film continues at this pace till the very end. Each scene seems to involve nudity or violence in some way. The only thing breaking this up is the countless false alarm scares in the movie. You know the sort of thing. A girl gets grabbed from behind by a mysterious hand. She whirls around with a scream, only to see that her friend has sneaked up on her as a joke. There are so many of these fake out jump scares in the movie. I feel it must have been part of the original comedy spoof script. Maybe it's a comment on how overused these kind of jump scares are in regular slasher movies. <laughs> There's loads of great moments in the movie. My favourite scene is this one where the two girls lock themselves in the room to escape the killer, only to have him quietly sneak in through the window behind them. It's really pantomime-y. I can almost hear the audience shouting, He's behind you! Party, wouldn't you say? When she called down before, when Jackie... I don't know what to think. God, that was so horrible. What happened to her? I can't stop thinking about it. Well, maybe we shouldn't talk about it. God, every time you want to get help, if we ever get through. Ah! 
There's also this refrigerator scene which speaks for itself really. It shows off the kind of dark humour in the movie. Another funny scene is when the pizza delivery guy arrives and they shout through the door, what's the damage? And Russ Thorne replies, six so far. It's a little joke for anyone who's been keeping track of the body count. Up to that point he's killed five people on screen and then they open the door and you get to see his sixth victim, the pizza delivery guy, who's had his eyes drilled out. Not everything in the movie is played for laughs. There's parts that are just gory and frightening, and these shifts in tone don't feel jarring either. In fact, the humour just gives you a false sense of security, so when something that's truly scary happens, it feels all the more shocking. Another thing I like is that the girls actually seem to react to the killer in a half-sensible way. At one point they all sit back to back holding knives. I don't know why more people don't do this in horror films. They would have survived if they just sat there like that all night long. Of course they've got to spoil it by moving to go eat pizza off a dead guy, but it was a good idea while it lasted. They also seem to actively fight back against the killer, which is refreshing. We get a funny moment with a power saw, and they even managed to do a double tap. This isn't the end of the movie by the way. I don't want to show the very end in case I spoil it. There's not some big twist or anything, it's just I don't want to show the conclusion to the movie for people who haven't seen it. So if you like really cheesy 80s slasher films, I definitely recommend Slumber Party Massacre. It's not going to blow your mind with its originality, but don't let that put you off. Its beauty lies in its simplicity. It's a classic gore-filled slasher with no boring exposition scenes to get in the way of the action. Definitely check it out. So thank you for watching this video. If you've got any movies you'd like to see me review, let me know in the comments and I'll try and get round to them. If you'd like to support my channel, please check out my Patreon page, I'll put a link at the end. Until next time, goodbye.